All right. Hi, Elizabeth. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Well, thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Nice to have you with us. You've got a book out called How to Survive Middle School. And is this, are you a co-author? Were there other people writing it as well? No, I'm the single author of this volume. However, in the series, there are five different books. So I'm one of five authors. Yeah, they address the core subjects of middle school. So there's one on English, science, math, American history, and then my volume is uh, world history. Is the, I'm a little confused. Is the title of the book How to Survive Middle School? Yeah, the title of the series the is How series. to Survive Middle School. I would say the title of the book is How to Survive Middle School, colon, world history in particular. Okay. All right. Now, is this directly related to the COVID pandemic and the kind of craziness that the kids have had to go through for the last couple of years, or is it more broad than that? Um, you, the content of the book is quite broad. It's, it is world history um, in one volume as well as I could do it. Um, I would say the uses of the book are directly related to the pandemic as it ends up. I mean, the series was conceived of in, I'd say, 2018 when we had no idea what was coming. But um, now that it's been released um, in its entirety, I, it extremely relevant to what kids need right now as they recover from the learning loss of the pandemic. So um, it's sort of a surprise that it ended up um, here to fill this need in this particular moment. But generally speaking, it was about world history. So it started at what point in, in history? Um, I actually start with early man. Um, for a couple of pages. It's, it's quite a wide breadth of content. And um, it carries through all the way up until, well, present day, because there's um, a chapter called Challenges of Today. Um, and yeah, we tried to go as far to the present as we could. But as you see, you know, history keeps unfolding. So um, I wasn't able to include a chapter on the Ukraine war. Um, but there is a reference to COVID. And again, you know, we, we outline for kids what some of the challenges are that we face today, and um, that's where it ends. So it's a, it's a very, very broad gallop through human history. A lot of your talking points are on COVID or specifically mm -hmm. how it has impacted kids. So I want to kind of focus yeah. a little bit on that because I think that that's relevant for people. Now, in New York City, the schools were shut down for how long? Well, they shut um, in mid-March in 2020. Um, we opened in the fall late and then closed again that school year of 2020 to 21 during the winter months. And then we had sort of a hybrid situation where some kids were still learning remotely and others were here in the school building in alternate small groups, and that took place in the spring of 2021. So this school year is the first time, you know, we've been fully in person since the pandemic struck in New York City. Okay, and now it's just about summer break, right? So mm -hmm. you're going to be going yep. out on break for three months and then coming back. Mm -hmm. Are the kids still masked or is masks no longer? Um, well, it's optional at this point. It's optional. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, we have new outbreaks in New York City, as you probably know. So we're seeing more and more masks. I myself just recovered from COVID only a week ago. So, you know, the, the, the numbers are ticking up. Um, as you know, people aren't getting quite as sick, especially the children. But yeah, we've got, we've got a whole combination of things. But we are fully in person, of course, and then partially masked, I would say. Okay. Well, I'm sorry to hear you got COVID. Did you... <laughs> Are you were you fully vaxxed when you got it? Oh sure. Okay, oh, yeah. so you were yeah. not too serious. Not too serious. You know, a couple of days of fever and some congestion, and there's there's still some lingering fatigue that most of us experience. But um, yeah, it's not uncommon in New York right now to come down with it, even if you're vaxxed and boosted. Yeah, I think that New York City would have to be particularly careful because I live there for two years back in 1980. And you cannot avoid close contact with people in New York City. It's just impossible, unless you wear a space suit when you go out. And, <laughs> right. you know, it, it's yeah. like, 
as contagious it, as COVID is, it's almost inevitable that you're going to get it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. glad you're better. So I, I took it in stride. All is well. Here I am. <laughs> and But really, I mean, I do think um, with summer coming, this is um, a, a very um, propitious time for the book to be released and the whole series. Um, you know, last summer, New York City did a very ambitious summer school program, and they're going to roll that out again this year. Um, but, you know, I've been speaking with people about the importance of learning outside of the school walls, um, that this is more important than ever as children try to recover from this learning loss. And so these books, you know, they're paper. They're, they're designed to be, you know, on children's bookshelves and discussed by family members and, and used in ways that, um, you know, just transcend the walls of, of school because we need as much as we can for these kids to be able to catch up. Do you think that learning online for children K through 12 is good or detrimental? Um, I think we saw that remote learning was pretty much a failure. I mean, we did the best we could. And I think that for high school students and in some ways for our middle school kids, some online learning um, was beneficial. But, you know, I'm assistant principal right now to pre-K to 8. And, you know, the little ones sorely need in-person learning. And I'm so happy that it is back, even though they have their little masks on. Um, the middle school kids need the social contact, as we all know, that's so important at this age. So I would say that um, we did the best we could. And again, the older the student, the, the greater the impact of the remote learning. Um, but I honestly think, you know, kids are on screen so much as it is, even outside of school hours. I mean, we, we have the numbers, it's something like six or seven hours a day that they're spending on some kind of screen um, that I, I'm thinking that parents and um, teachers as well will welcome more traditional paper resources for kids. Yeah, I would agree. I also think that you're right about the age because I can remember when online learning first came out for college and advanced degrees. And I thought, oh, this is terrific. Now I can do it at mm -hmm. our own speed. I can do it at three in the mm -hmm. morning on Sunday if that's when I have time. <laughs> but for children, no, I think that, you know, they need the social contact, like you said. And also because both parents tend to work. So they need the kids yeah. out of the house for that time so they can do what they need to do. Otherwise, somebody's got to stay home with the kids and that yeah. can be very disruptive for parents that are both working yeah. and you know, I just. Oh no, I don't know how they did it. I really, um, I really respect what parents tried to do. It was, it was really more than, than was realistic for people to pull off. So, you know, when I was writing the book, um, right at the height of the pandemic in 2020, I remember thinking like, I wish it were published now. The kids need it now. They're, they're stuck at home. You know, they, they need multiple resources. Um, and yet, um, I think it's still getting to them in time. Um, and, it, you know, this is a kind of book that adults can enjoy as well. But what what we like about it is that we've used our best knowledge as edu educators to um, infuse the content with thinking skills and things that, you know, best teachers would do because parents didn't know how to do that. I mean, they couldn't no. be expected to know. They weren't trained teachers. And I, I heard over and over again how frustrated they were. They didn't really know how to do this stuff. So um, these are designed, um, as it says on the book, as a do-it-yourself uh, kind of guide for kids. And um, parents can certainly join in on that. Middle school age kids don't always welcome it, but they might. And, you know, we want these books to kind of be coaching kids through what they need to know for middle school. So is this like a lesson book? Yeah, it's interactive, interactive. in that sense. Like, okay. I wouldn't want to call it a workbook. Um, it's, it's an interactive text that has some places for notes and it certainly has many prompts for kids to engage in critical thinking. Um, one of the unique features about it um, is that it has these survival tools. You know, it's built on this metaphor of, of surviving middle school um, as a kind of wilderness 
and it is, as you might remember. Um, so they, there are these survival skills, I'm just looking at my book right now, that um, appear as icons throughout the book that remind kids to stop and think. Um, and they're, they're little images that correspond to different kinds of survival skills, say, on a hiking trip. So there might be a picture of hiking boots. And that always reminds the kids to put on their hiking boots, which symbolizes their prior knowledge, so that they're standing on something that they already know that, that is firm and foundational. There's also a pickaxe that appears in certain places that's saying, okay, you need to dig deeply into this quote. So um, the idea is to then build these thinking skills um, that are embedded inside of the content. And there's also places where kids can write. But I'd say it's not designed to be like, you know, did you memorize everything well and what's the answer to that? It's, um, it's, it's more in line with, with critical thinking and some of the common core skills that teachers seek to engender in their students inside the classroom. Okay. You said that there was a small chapter on COVID in there. What? Uh, yeah, it's part of a chapter. Part of the um, chapter. Okay. We, yeah. I mean, there's... There's a section on the um, on the Spanish flu, um, and then it also goes into other pandemics throughout history that contextualizes this. And the pandemic is referred to in several places in the book. Um, I didn't devote an entire chapter to it, um, but there's an important chapter at the end of the book about today's challenges, and that's part of the section on disease. Um, but because it's a look back as well as somewhat of a present day look, you know, um, there's information about AIDS and, and, you know, other viruses that have taken hold of the world. So um, it was a lot. You know, there's a lot of content to cover in there. And as I say at the beginning of the book to the kids, like, we'll never cover it all. You know, you can't possibly write a book that tells you every single thing about world history. But we've tried to choose what we think is most important for kids and relevant to them. Did you did you write this book specifically as a write it for the school or did you write it for the general public? For the, my school? Well, all schools no, it or was, any school. Yeah. Um, no, it's it's actually yeah. I it's written for the general public. It's written for any kid um, who happens to get their hands on this book. So it's um, it's not being sold as a textbook. It's really not set up like a textbook. Um, so we, we call it a study guide. It's an educational supplement. So really, I mean, I think that school libraries will be buying it. I think, I think teachers um, would be great to have it on their bookshelves. It's not a curriculum, though. So um, curr okay. we see it as probably bought by parents who want to give their kids extra resources and introduce them to something that's engaging, that's offline, that can just help them give, you know, get a leg up on all of the different content areas that it covers. Okay. Well, I think on that, we're going to have to wind this down. We are kind of out of time. Do you have the book there? Do you want to hold it up? Let me I do. See the cover? Yeah. Here's the World History Edition. Oh, um, the covers all look similar to this. Um, that's all blurry. And, uh, <laughs> oh, no. I don't know how we get that. Is that better? Well, yeah, a little bit. You know what? We'll put the That's picture hard. up. We'll put it up. You can put it up. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll read the subtitle. Well, it's a do-it-yourself guide to world history. Beware. This book might make you smarter than your parents. <laughs> I think some kids would say that's not hard to do. but uh, They love I'm it. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> they love it. All right. Uh, do you have a website you want to give out? Um, I have an Instagram, Elizabeth MP1, and then Random House has um, an Instagram page, Random House Kids, where kids can, uh, I mean, adults, everybody can find out more about the series, and you know, it's on sale everywhere. Okay, so it's available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and yeah, all those yeah, places. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was nice meeting you and talking.